So one more test, since we're all set up to do high current tests. This is a Eaton bolt-on type breaker, 20 amps, and it's a dual, or I guess, yeah, probably dual type breaker. So you can put one breaker in a slot and get actually two breakers. And the bolt-on type with this bolt here is meant to bolt right into the circuit breaker housing and is, well, in many ways, the industrial version of the home BR type that has a slot. In fact, you can see there's still the vestigial slot here and the home version would just not have this assembly and this slot would just snap down onto a sort of a terminal sticking up from the breaker panel. Anyway, the bolt-on type makes it easy for us to change the bolt and attach a wire here and we're going to see what type of current it takes to trip these. So, to that end, we again have our trusty ammeter so we can watch the current and we'll attach this once again to our arc welder. We can get it to tighten finally. There we go. And to the other end of the arc welder. We'll attach the voltmeter so we can see what type of voltage is appearing across the breaker, which we would anticipate to be pretty low, like in the probably volt or less type range, because it shouldn't be dissipating much heat at all, because you can imagine a breaker panel with 20 or 40 of these, if they were each dissipating 5 watts, well, it would get pretty hot. So I think we're all set up to go and what we will do is gradually increase the voltage which will in turn result in an increase in current and see how far we can go gradually before it trips and then we'll try sudden currents to see what the magnetic trip is because there are two mechanisms for tripping one is thermal which is the long-term slight overcurrent mechanism and the other is magnetic which is the massive overload better trip in milliseconds before any major damage occurs so let's see what happens okay we're good to go we'll start increasing the current and let's get it up to 20 amps the nameplate rating of the breaker And there we go, we're at 20 amps, and you can see it, we're at about 0.16 volts. So that's somewhere around three watts maybe being dissipated in the breaker. Not bad. And, well, it's holding as it should. So we will increase the current now to say 25 amps and it's still holding as one would expect it should be able to take that for quite a while but let's crank it up to 30 now and see what happens the breaker is well within its rights not to trip for a while it should be able to sustain that for up to maybe half an hour depending on exactly how that breaker is set and in fact if we crank it up to oh I was gonna say 40 amps we didn't get anywhere close and it did trip so that's actually not bad let's try that again so once again Let's try that and we'll go up to 30 amps. I'm just going to count it up now. 31, 32, 33, 
34, 35, 36, bingo. It went at 36, not an unreasonable trip, but what we should do now is leave it at about 30 and just see how long it takes for that to trip. So we'll crank it up to 30 again. Okay, so it tripped. I don't know exactly how long that was, but we'll put the number up. The other test we should do is try a considerable overcurrent. And when I say considerable, I mean perhaps around 60 amps because that's what an induction motor would draw for a second coming up to speed. And I'm just going to adjust my voltage to about double of what it was. And so when I turn this on, we should get 40 amps, an induction motor starting perhaps, and see how long before the breaker trips. And that's important because you do want it to sustain a considerable overcurrent for a few seconds while, say, a compressor comes up to speed. There we go. That was not bad at all. That's probably more than enough time for a compressor or other motor to get going. So just for fun, we should hook this across the unlimited arc welder. The arc welder plugged right into 240 volts and end up with a startup current in the hundreds of amps and just see how well the breaker responds to that. So here goes essentially instantaneous. And that's what you would hope, because that's what it should do. That would have been magnetic tripping. What we saw before would have been thermal tripping. Did you see that? You can actually see a spark coming out of the back of the breaker. That's a little ball of plasma. It was generated when the circuit breaker opened with such a large current across it. So that's the end of this video. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.